what makes Wirebend so different as a theatrical experience, as an experience? Um, we combine artisan, master artisan costuming with interactive animation created by our top young animators, all on stage in service of Trinidad and Tobago's and our ancestral folklore. The lead story of this, um, this thing, the boy and his dog, is a story that my dad um, told me when I was a little boy. And I've never seen it, I, like I'm a student of, of history and, and, and you know, so I go into all the archives and look up where the recorded stories and I've never seen it recorded anywhere. And this story that used to fascinate us as kids, it used to frighten us, but that kind of way that something frightening and fascinating, like daddy tell us that story again. And the story is, is this boy living with his grandmother uh, at a house at the edge of the village, at the edge of the forest. And he's a good boy and he does a good deed for an old man and the old man gives him this gift of this puppy. And the dog turns out to be magical. And any time the boy is in trouble, a bucket of water turns to blood. And the dog knows the boy is in trouble and goes after him to rescue him. And then there's this part of the forest that you're not supposed to go into. His friends breach the rule, they go in and the boy, and there's a witch that eats little children. And so that sets up the whole thing, you know, can this dog rescue this boy? And the Patwa songs, there are all kinds of stuff in it. Rich, rich, rich detail. And all my life I said, you know, I want to put this on one day, you know. Um, and my dad is 89 years, he's almost 90, he's going to be 90 just now. And he has Alzheimer's. And I wanted to put it on for him, you know, in tribute to him to say thanks. The play is entertaining. I mean, it's, Straight up, I mean, it's funny, it's a spectacle like you would not have seen before. Um, in the first year when we did the play, so automatically our first port of call, we say, okay, we, we um, school tour the primary schools. And I mean, those kids, we, I mean, we destroyed those kids. The kids were screaming and that kind of stuff. They, they're involved in the drama. Don't go in there, whatever, whatever. And so the second year we said, okay, we, we know we have the primary schools locked. The second year we say, okay, secondary schools. Big, hardback, cynical, digital, um, trini youth, modern youth. They were getting on just like the primary school kids and stuff. I mean, the same way, and I kind of stopped screaming. I mean, if, well, I mean, this is, you know, I mean, say, all right, cool. Now we know we have something. So far, I mean, thousands of people have seen this show in the last, in the three years that we've existed. You know, thousands of school children, all kinds of people from all over, you know, the country. Um, and we've traveled to the east, the south, the north, you know, we've staged the show in multiple locations. So um, we know that it has legs. We know what happens to the audiences um, when they come. We know that we have repeat people coming back, you know, because we've done 12 stories over the last three years and we do different stories each time we roll out. And one of these stories that we're doing is the four kings and the last day in the world. And in that story, we retell all the creation myths the, the, from the, four, the five major tribes, so you know, African, Chinese, East Indian, European, and Native American creation myths, some of the core creation myths. It's the first time on, the, on stage in Trinidad, and it's been told with animation as well as reenacted by its costumes and characters and that kind of stuff. So, you know, you know again, you know, from everything from Thor and Odin to the Orishas to the Hindu pantheon to the Warao tribes and their, their creation stories to the Chinese creation myths. I chose this because one, it's the kids, it, 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 you know, um, and it's about legacy and inheritance and passing things on um, in terms of the audience and in terms of the process. When we create the things, we have apprenticeship processes with the costuming and kids coming and they learn craft and all these things. Um, but it enabled me to marry activism and my art and the different things that I do. So I'm able to work with the old master artisans and, and I like working with contemporaneity, modernity. So I, I'm able to like now hook up with like the top young um, animators and tell them like, let's go clear, right? You're animating the gods of four, five different tribes, you know, um, and give them that arena to play with and stuff and that is going to accurate and it's going to operate with, you're going to interact with 25 foot puppets. Come for a Blue Mine experience, you know, that's, that's what we offer.